Hello and welcome back. In section 2.4, we'll start with the derivative. So we'll begin the section with the idea of a rate of change. Sometimes abbreviate that as ROC. So we'll consider f of x equals one quarter of x squared. So average rate of change, so A4 average. We'll go from zero to one. So the idea here is how much vertical change do I have over this amount of horizontal change? So you'll notice that idea is similar to the idea of the slope of a line, except uh, the difference being a line, that rate of change is the same everywhere. On a curve, it will change depending on where we are on the curve. Uh, so we need our outputs for this, f of one would be a fourth of one squared, which is a fourth, and f of zero, one fourth of zero squared, which is zero. So our average rate of change, we increased to one fourth from zero, while our inputs went from one to zero as well. So we had an average rate of change of one fourth. So this is saying on average over this interval for every increase of one on the X axis, the Y axis went up by one quarter. The outputs went up by a quarter. So I'm gonna have you try the same function You're going to find the average rate of change from x is 3 to x is 4. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can find that average rate of change. Okay, so welcome back. So f of 4, a quarter of 4 squared, a quarter of 16 is 4 even. f of 3, a quarter of 3 squared, which is 9 fourths. So your average rate of change, change in the output over change in the input. So 4 minus 9 fourths divided by 4 minus 3. So 16 fourths minus 9 fourths is 7 fourths. 7 fourths over 1 is 7 fourths. So a different rate of change, even though we were still working with the same original function. A little hint here. Use seven halves for the three and a half. So see if you can find the average rate of change between three and three and a half. Go ahead and pause the video and do that calculation. Okay, so f of three we already have. Welcome back. f of seven halves. One fourth of seven halves squared. So that is 49 sixteenths. So our average rate of change on this interval, change in the output over change in the input. So 49 sixteenths minus the output when x is three, uh, that was nine over four, which would be then 36 over 16 and over three and a half minus three. 
So 13 sixteenths over a half divided by a half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So 13 eighths would be our instantaneous rate of change. So again, different intervals, different rates of change. The idea in calculus is to get to the instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change, and this should look familiar, limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So that was our difference quotient from before. That was the reason we were working with that. Uh, so let's recall uh, that same function we were playing with, a quarter of x squared at x equals three. So f of three plus h, one fourth of three plus h quantity squared. So a fourth of three plus h by three plus h. F of three plus h, one fourth of nine plus six h plus h squared. So just foiling those guys out. So that is nine fourths. Uh, plus 3 halves h plus h squared over 4. So the 6 fourths reduced to 3 halves there. Um, f of 3 we already saw from the previous page was 9 fourths. So our instantaneous rate of change would be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 3 plus h. So 9 fourths plus 3 halves h plus h squared over 4 minus f of 3, which is 9 fourths, all over h. So notice that denominator is the same as saying 3 plus h minus 3. The 3's will just drop. So some other things dropping. The 9 fourths will drop. We can factor an h at the top. So our instantaneous rate of change is the limit as h goes to zero of h by three halves plus h over four over h. h over h is one since h is going towards zero but not reaching zero. So we have the limit as h goes to zero of three halves plus h over four. Now we can actually plug in the zero and not get the zero over zero indeterminate form we would get before. So zero over four is zero, three halves plus zero is three halves. So this is our instantaneous rate of change. And notice that our values on the previous page, if you go back in your notes, will start getting closer and closer to that value. Uh, we're not gonna go through it together, but you can maybe try uh, using the previous method, x equals 3 to... So again, we don't have time to go through it together, but you can try from x equals 3 to x equals, say, 3 and 1 one hundredth, or to x equals 3 and 1 one thousandth. You'll see that we get closer and closer to the value of 3 over 2, closer and closer to the value of 3 halves, the instantaneous rate of change when x is 3. Alright, so let me have you all try one out though with an instantaneous rate of change. Let's go for x equals 5, and we'll go for f of x is 3x squared plus x minus 2. 
So again, uh, you're going to need, as a little hint there, f of 5 and f of 5 plus h to get that job done. So go ahead and pause it, see if you can figure out the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, welcome back. So let me find my pieces here. f of 5, 3 by 5 squared, plus 5, minus 2, so 25 by 3, 75. 80 minus 278 f of 5 plus h 3 by 5 plus h quantity squared plus 5 plus h minus 2 so all of our x's turned into 5 plus h's so a little bit of simplifying to be done next 3 by 25 plus 10 h plus h squared uh, plus h plus 3, so plus 5 and minus 2. So we're still just playing the simplifying game. So 75 plus 30h plus 3h squared plus h plus 3, and just hit the rest of our like terms and we're ready to go. Uh, 3h squared plus 30 times h plus 1h, 31h, my apologies. And then uh, plus 75 plus 3 is plus 78. So our instantaneous rate of change, the limit as h goes to 0 of 3h squared plus 31h plus 78 minus 78 all over h. And then we get some nice canceling going. 78 minus 78 is 0. We can factor an h. Top and bottom. So limit as h goes to 0 of h over h by 3h plus 31. So our instantaneous rate of change. Limit as h goes to 0 of 3h plus 31. Don't need two parentheses there, just the one, sorry. And 3 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 31 is 31. So our instantaneous rate of change when x is 5 would be 31. Now since there's really nothing uh, special about x equals 5 on this problem, uh, we can go to sort of a more general setup for that. And that general setup gives us what we call the derivative. So the derivative is just sort of a way to get the equation for the instantaneous rate of change for any point that we want to use. Uh, the symbol for it, we have a prime, so f prime of x. It's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we leave the x in there and then just fill it in when we're done when we need it. So if we go with our last function that you played with, f of x being a 3x squared plus x minus 2, and find our pieces, f of x we already have, h we already have, so really we only have to find f of the quantity x plus h. So all of your x's turn into x plus h's in parentheses, and then we simplify. So 3 by x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Um, if it does help you to see the middle step there of writing out the two copies of x plus h, go ahead and Take one more line and do that. Uh, let's see, then we have plus x plus h minus 2. Knock down the next set of parentheses there. 3x squared plus 6 times h times x plus 3 times h squared plus x plus h minus 2. 
And this time though, uh, we don't have any like terms to get any uh, cancellation done within here. This has an x squared only, nobody else has an x squared only. h to the first, x to the first, nobody has that, and so on. But our derivative, f prime of x, is going to be the limit as h goes to zero of, so 3x squared plus 6hx plus 3h squared plus x plus h minus 2 minus the original f of x, so that is the quantity 3x squared plus x minus 2, all over h. Now we do get some nice pretty canceling happening on this as well though. 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. x minus x is 0, negative 2 minus negative 2 is 0. Uh, notice of the three terms that I have left here, 1, 2, and don't forget your 3 back here, uh, each one of them has an h, so I'll go ahead and factor that out as well. So f prime of x, limit as h goes to 0 of h by 6x plus 3h plus 1. So h is the same as h times 1. All over h. h over h is 1. And then we let the h go to 0. So that would be a 6x plus 1. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is plus 1. So then this is basically the instantaneous rate of change for uh, our function f of x. So this would be uh, what's called the slope of the tangent line. So what we mean by a tangent line, I'll just make a little sketch. If this is our curve, and we're looking at some point along the curve, the tangent line describes the instantaneous rate of change at that single point. Uh, all the ones we did before where we had two points this guy is a tangent line. If we used two points, so say we used here and here and connected those up, uh, that's what we would refer to as being a secant line. The derivative works with the tangent line. So one thing we can do with this, uh, we'll look at the equation of the tangent line at x equals 5. So we'll continue this one on the next page. So the equation of a line, uh, just like from way, way, way back when in your math career, 95 or whatever equivalent you took uh, somewhere else, uh, equation of a line, you need a point and a slope. So recall our functions, f of x was 3x squared plus x minus 2. If I plug in f of 5, that will give me my ordered pair. That will tell me where I am. So 3 by 5 squared plus 5 minus 2. Uh, so that was what gave us the 78 before. f prime of 5, this will tell us the slope of the tangent line. So recall that f prime of x from the previous page was 6x plus 1. So f prime of 5, 6 by 5 plus 1. 
So that is 31. So then we're writing the equation of a line that has a point of 5 comma 78 and a slope of 31. So then we're just using the change in y is slope times change in x formula you've worked with for forever. So change in y, y minus 78 is our slope 31 times our change in x. So y is 31x minus 155 plus 78. So our tangent line, y is 31x, and then minus, let's see, 7, 16, 9, 31x minus 97. Okay, so, oh, I've uh, corrected my little... Uh, mental math error there, uh, minus 77. You can take a look at this in your graphing calculator. If you put in your original 3x squared plus x minus 2 and 31x minus 77, and I've started our window on just going a half a unit left and right of 5 uh, on the x's, and 60 to 95 kind of gets us in the ballpark. I counted by 5s. So then here's our curve, here's our line. Notice how they meet up in that small neighborhood around it. So it's basically, here's our curve, here's our line sort of touching our curve and moving away from it. So that's the idea with the tangent line, the idea of the instantaneous rate of change. have you all try one of these out and then we'll do a derivative with a radical involved. Let's go with just x equals 1. So derivative in the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1, uh, we'll, I'll have you work with g of x is 5x squared minus 4x plus 1. So let's see if we can go through the pieces to uh, find those two things. Okay, welcome back. So the derivative, this would be then g prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. So finding g of the quantity x plus h, 5 by x plus h quantity squared minus 4 by the quantity x plus h plus 1, and lots of fun simplifying ensued from there. minus 4x minus 4h plus 1 and finally knocking down the parentheses so 5x squared plus 10hx plus 5h squared minus 4x minus 4h and a plus 1 so g prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of 5x squared plus 10hx, that whole thing above us. Minus our original g of x, the quantity 5x squared minus 4x plus 1. Make sure you're using the parentheses correctly as well. All over h. Then it was everybody's favorite time, cancellation time. And our three terms that were left each had an h involved, so we can do a little factoring. So g prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of h over h by 10x plus 5h 
minus 4. If h is approaching 0 but not reaching 0, h over h is a 1, and I can get rid of those. And then our limit, 5 by 0 is 0. 0 plus 10x minus 4 is 10x minus 4. So then we wanted the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So I would need g of 1 to find the ordered pair. g prime of 1 would find the slope. So g of 1, 5 by 1 squared minus 4 by 1 plus 1. So g of 1. So 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 and 1 is 2. Uh, g prime of 1. 10 by 1 minus 4 is 6. So basically we have the order pair 1, 2 with a slope of 6. So then change in y is our slope times change in x. So y is 6x minus 6 plus 2. So y is 6x minus 4 would be the equation of the tangent line at that one given point. And again, if you want to uh, kind of take a peek at the two of those, uh, you can go near that point in your calculator and plug in uh, both your tangent line and your original function, and you should see the line closely approximating the curve. Okay, so then as advertised, uh, finding the derivative when we have a square root involved. Uh, let's see. Just going to take a look at f of x is the square root of the quantity, and we'll throw a coefficient on there, uh, 2x minus 3. So our derivative f prime of x, limit as h goes to 0 of f of the quantity x plus h minus f of x all over h. We've got f of x, we've got h, we don't have f of the quantity x plus h. So we'll find that. Make sure you are labeling things. So square root of 2 by the quantity x plus h minus 3. And not much simplifying to do here. But we'll go ahead and take care of what we can do. So 2x plus 2h minus 3. So an f prime of x by substitution, square root of 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus the original f of x all over h. And we want the limit as h is approaching, of course, 0. So as is, I get the indeterminate 0 over 0 form if I just plug in the 0 right now. Uh, you might recall what we did in earlier sections using the conjugate. So we'll multiply top and bottom by the same thing. The conjugate of this, so the same square roots with, instead of a minus, a plus in between them. So first one has a 2x plus 2h minus 3. Second one has a 2x minus 3 in it. And if I multiply the top by that, I have to multiply the bottom by that as well. Otherwise, I've multiplied by something other than a 1. I've changed the value if I multiply by something that's not worth 1. So f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0. We'll go ahead and foil out the top. So first times the first, I have this, both of these same things underneath the square root. So I can take them out of the square root, 2x plus 2h minus 3. Outside and inside will give me plus and minus of the same thing. So those will cancel. And then last, positive by a negative will have a negative and same idea. Square root of a times square root of a will give us an a, so a 2x minus 3 in this case. All over, we'll leave this factored h by quantity root 2x plus 2h minus 3 plus root 2x minus 3. Close it on up. 
then we're going to do a little bit of canceling. So 2x minus 2x is 0, negative 3 minus negative 3 is 0. And we can factor in h top and bottom. So f prime of x, limit as h goes to 0 of h over h, which will cancel. Upstairs, then I'm only left with a 2. Uh, downstairs, we have square root of 2x plus 2h minus 3 plus square root of 2x minus 3. If h is allowed to go to 0, then both of these in the denominator will turn into root 2x minus 3s. So let's go ahead and do that. f prime of x is now uh, 2 over root 2x minus 3, and I had 2 of those. The 2's will cancel, so I have 1 over square root of the quantity 2x minus 3. So that would be our derivative. Uh, now as far as um, domain, domain of f, anything that would give us at least 0 under the denominator, so 2x minus 3, we want to be at least 0. So 2x, we want to be at least 3. So x has to be at least 3 halves. So 3 halves to infinity. But if I let x equal 3 halves in f prime, I get a 0 in the denominator. So the domain of f prime in this case same three halves, but exclusive, approaching infinity. So I cannot find the derivative at three halves, even though I have an ordered pair that exists at three halves. And that leads us sort of into our last topic, just a visual representation of places where we have non-existence of a derivative. Anywhere we where we have what's called a cusp, sort of a, a sharp point. A corner. A hole. A jump like you see on the reciprocal function.